Hello, my name is Laura Mosqueda, and I'm delighted that we can show you what the next phase of your training could look like. Tech School of Medicine, we pride ourselves on challenging paradigms and thinking outside of the box. The amount of exposure that we get as students at LA County and Keck and all these different sites is incredible. The training you get here is as hands-on as it could be. Good morning, Mr. Reed. Oh, do you have the CT scan? Yeah. Let's pull up that CT scan. So this is the CT scan from the first day. We take on the toughest challenges, the toughest cases. We take on the biggest questions for research to try and make a difference and improve human health. We are smack in the middle of it all, right here uh, in this health sciences campus. So we have a county hospital right across the street that has incredible, not only inpatient, but ambulatory facilities. Right across the street in the other direction, we have our Keck Hospital with wonderful ambulatory and outpatient surgery sorts of facilities. Then on my right, we have our Norris Comprehensive Cancer Hospital. And then just across the street, we have our major research buildings too. Research and education are really the foundations upon which everything else at the School of Medicine is, is founded on. You have multitudes of opportunities to do bench work, uh, clinical research, translational research, and really take your work from the bench side to the bedside. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. Good morning. This week, in fact, we've had a sickle cell patient, an aplastic anemia patient who came for treatment. We get uh, TTP patients. We have three to five autologous stem cell transplant patients on at any given time. I've been here 44 years, and there's two common foundational principles. Number one, patient interests supersede self-interest. This is absolutely critical. Your levels are coming down, looking good. Um, so you're thinking discharge? Yeah, I think you can go home today. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the second is that this is a teaching center, and we talk about the very famous professors that are here to teach you. But the one thing everybody learns is that the master teachers are the patients themselves. And so, sir, we're gonna show you what you actually had before and after, okay? okay? This is what you came in with. <laughs> That's what you came in with. <laughs> Nearly locked out that entire lung, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You must have a passion. Part of your mission is to take care of the underserved. We are serving the underserved. We are serving those that are more socioeconomically advantaged. But essentially, you want to serve everyone and everybody and serve them the same, regardless of who they are. So who's our next patient? In here? Yeah. Okay. Yes. These are the patients that, you know, it's not just a pleasure to serve, it's an honor to serve. They're my people. It's, I see myself reflected in the, in the population. I really wanted to come back home in more ways than one. This could be my mom. This could be my dad. This could be my uncle. Um, and no other place could afford me that opportunity besides here. It's been a, the most challenging and rewarding thing I've done in my life, being here. Uh, I've been pushed in ways that I didn't think were possible. We're looking for that spark, that spark in a person that's going to become a good physician who's going to put the patient first. Can we get Dr. Dixon here, please? Can we get some backup? No matter how dramatic this scenario is, it's something that happens. The patient uh, just went non-responsive, her blood pressure dropped. We are pretty much in the ORs from day one. We do cases that other places um, just read about in textbooks. You really want to care for the caregiver. Um, our goal is to prevent burnout before it even happens. It takes about eight months till you start thinking, I can do this, I can master this. Do you see anything worrisome at all? Anything new? No, I don't. This is not a movie, this is for real. Can you show us two fingers? It's really important that not only do they listen to what the attending has to say, 
but equally important, the attending needs to listen to what the resident has to say. Show me where your pain is. We're here to learn. There's no dumb questions ever. We really want an inclusive environment where you can be the thought and the change leader on our campus. If you come to USC, you will be part of a close-knit, collaborative Trojan community. It's so important to know that you're part of the Trojan family. That's not just a catchphrase here, it's something that we really need. We care about the people who are here. We care about you after you leave. It's a lifelong commitment on our part. Hi, my name is Nima Nasiri. I'm currently a Chief Resident in Urology here at LA County USC Medical Center and I'm here to talk to you about our program. So the program is a five-year program. Uh, currently there are three residents per year and one of the strengths of the program really is that we rotated a, a number of sites. So the primary sites are LA County USC Medical Center, which is a county hospital, uh, and Keck USC, which is our, our private facility. Uh, so th those are the two major centers, but you do spend a, a fair amount of time also at CHLA, almost about eight months. It's a very extensive pediatric exposure, and you also go to Rancho Los Amigos, which is a, a, a very well-respected uh, center for uh, neurological diseases uh, to learn the complex care of those types of patients. And uh, if you want, you can set up other rotations as well. Currently, we're working on, on Verdugo Hills Hospital. LA County USC is, is almost the heart of the program. Um, you go there during your intern year, uh, you spend currently six months there. The urology experience has become more robust there as an intern. Uh, and that's really where you learn the, the basic management of the patient on the floor. Um, you do get an extensive operative experience starting your intern year with more basic cases obviously, and then you progress in a stepwise fashion. Uh, in your second year you spend eight months out of the year there as well. and so. The best part of that program is you are really in charge of the patient starting as a second year. And so you get a call from the emergency room and they have a patient down there. You go down there, you evaluate them, you work them up. Uh, they come back to your clinic and you pre-op them. If they go to the OR, it's your OR. You take them to the operating room. You take care of them immediately after surgery. They come back to your clinic and you follow them there. So one of the major strengths of the program, which I didn't see in any other program that I interviewed at and I interviewed broadly, um, is this continuity of care and the, the autonomy that you get because of just the, the sheer responsibility that's given to you, it's bestowed upon you. It, it builds your confidence. Um, you learn to care for the patient. Uh, the onus of responsibility is on you, um, although obviously you have support. Uh, there are attendings at every level, um, but really you learn to take responsibility for the patient. And that's the, the kind of culture that we try to build there at LA County. So then you take that and then you, you transition to Keck. Uh, which is obviously the private hospital, and there you have real world-class experts in the field. And so you take that sense of responsibility for the patient and now you apply it to what you're gonna learn in the OR. And uh, you're really learning from, uh, I would argue the best surgeons in the country in urology are here. Uh, open oncology, robotic oncology, female um, urology, and, uh, and reconstructive as well. And so really uh, there you learn all the pearls and all the tricks and all the, uh, you know, how to move your hands and especially also how to care for very complex patients, um, especially those that are in the ICU. And then you take that back in your more senior years back to the county and then your responsibility is to teach, which is, the, you know, just it has a benefit of its own as well. I, I was reading a quote and it said, you know, you really don't know something until you can teach it. Um, and you, your responsibilities as a chief resident are obviously to maintain a presence in the OR, but also uh, appreciate each junior resident's capabilities and try to promote them in a stepwise fashion to where they need to be or beyond, uh, depending on where they're at. And so it's a, it's a level of graduated responsibility. It's knowing how to push, when not to push went to guide, um, and so that in and of itself I think is, is a part of the education that you know, most places I don't think offer, uh, but certainly is, if you're going into academia it's something that you'll need to master as well, so it's, it's great to get such an early exposure to it. When I was a second year, 
um, I, I did a skin to skin case. Uh, so skin to skin means you, you make the first incision and you close the last incision. Um, and that's unheard of. Uh, and you know, you do that with, in a robotic case. I did it at the county. The benefit of our program is we have kind of robots everywhere. A lot of programs will have one at their main hospital. We have ones everywhere. Um, and people that are trained on it and know how to use it as well to teach you. Uh, so certainly the level of autonomy applies to robotic cases as well. But I mean, when you go to the main hospital, you have leaders like Dr. Inderbir Gill, Dr. Aaron, Dr. Desai, Dr. Satello. These are all world-class names in robotic surgery. And they pride themselves in teaching you. So, uh, they, you know, you, they get a kick out of your progression, uh, which is unique. And, uh, you know, you're, it's like learning from the Michael Jordan of of robotic surgery. And so I, I would argue that there's no other facility in the country that has as robust of a robotic program as ours. Andrew Hunk, yep. what he does is he's taken a real scientific approach to robotic surgery. And so he, what is amazing, and it's available to all us residents, he breaks down each of our cases in a step-by-step -step fashion, meaning you turn your hand here, you change your camera angle here, and you can watch this play-by-play -play video, not just watching film like sports athletes do, but also it, he breaks it down and shows you, hey, the best types of surgeons do it like this. This is how you did it. Maybe this is, there's a way that you can kind of bridge this gap. And you go into that, you know, you watch film, you watch yourself progress, um, but also with guidance, it's like having a coach, you know? Uh, and so he can say, okay, you could do this better here, not just in real time in the OR, but also afterwards. Uh, and he'll give you like a report card essentially of how, how well you did, which is, uh, I think, fantastic. And, you know, if we, if we start talking about research, I mean, that's a whole other area that's, that's uniquely available here. And he's done a fantastic job with uh, artificial intelligence models and deep learning models in, in, in gauging what steps of robotic surgery are best for the patient. I think there's a real emphasis on getting involved in research at whatever level you feel comfortable at, but certainly getting involved um, just to see where in urology your passions lie. You know, you could enjoy a certain kind of operation, but you do a research in a different type of field, um, and that will change your pathway in the future. Um, and so all avenues of research are open to us. So if you're into basic sciences, that's available. If you're into translational research, that's available in spades. Um, Everything from case reports to systematic meta-analysis and reviews uh, are available. And now there are dedicated faculty just there to guide your research. Uh, they use these incredible platforms to, to make the performing of research as a resident when your time is constrained as easy as possible. So I, I've been involved in research since intern year and it's, you know, it's, it's been arguably one of the most defining moments or experiences of my residency, rather. Something clicked during the end of my third year where, yes, obviously you can fine tune certain skills, but you get a sense of knowing how to care for the complex patient and knowing the general sense of safe moves, when to do what in the operating room. And really that comes at the end of your third year for me uh, and is strengthened throughout your fourth and fifth years. And so I would say by the end of my fourth year, uh, you know, I felt comfortable with the management of m most any kind of patient. Certainly there's nuances and, and the learning never stops uh, and continues, especially in your first couple years out. Um, but in terms of being comfortable and getting ready to get out and practice, I remember being scared during second year thinking, man, how can I ever learn all of this stuff? And, and you know, it's only five years, it's not that much time. Uh, but really, I don't know what happens by the end of your third, fourth year, it just clicks and you just feel comfortable. So one of the, and it kind of goes back to the county and Keck experience where you are really in the trenches of the county uh, and you get your hands dirty and then you go to Keck and you work with these world-class instructors. And so you're a unique combination of, of capable and well-connected. And so I think that's really rare. A lot of programs, uh, you know, you become well-connected, but you can't operate with the same level of skill or vice versa. It's a really blue collar program. You lear really learn how to operate. But then, you know, in terms of someone picking up the phone and saying, hey, this is the guy, it's not as available. And so really, that's, this is the, the unique strength of this program. And I think if you add research to that component, you become a triple threat. 
Um, and so I can speak to myself. Um, there is no avenue or door that was closed upon me uh, in terms of my fellowship opportunities. Uh, I think a lot of people can go into private practice, but we're seeing more and more people uh, apply into academic fellowships. Um, and you know the prospects of, of academia that come after that, and I think you know certainly professors like training future professors, and so if you show that uh, that in inclination as well, uh, you know people take you under their wing immediately. Uh, I think it's all about attitude. It's yes, you come in with a certain fund of knowledge, and the more you have of that is fantastic. Uh, but it's really an attitude of there for the team and no task is too small. And you do it with a smile on your face. You know, there's the three A's, able, affable, and available. Um, and so really, if you are those three things, those are the type of people that we want. Uh, you know, people that are fun to work with, regardless of how many hours you've been there together. Personally, I remember the, the most fun time I had in residency was the most quote unquote taxing time where I was spending a lot, of, a lot of hours in the hospital, but I've never laughed more in my life. And you know, we're taking care of patients, we're operating, it's fun. Um, and so those are the kinds of people, people who will foster that kind of culture. Once you've done a residency or a fellowship here, you are ready for the next phase of your career. And that might be going into clinical practice, it might be going into academia, it might be going on for more training, whatever it is, be assured that you are going to be the most well-prepared person possible for that next part of your career.